So let me tell you a tale of woes with this blimmin' tubular system. Now it's a great system, I love it, it's amazing, definitely get it. There's just that one tiny snagging issue in the back of my mind after I installed it and after I put it back together. Now this is my bicycle pump, it goes up to 160 psi, now you need a pump that can go up to 100 psi or 110. I like to pump my tubular system between 100 and 110 for you know accuracy sake and stuff because you'll never get it spot on 100 or whatever so I always just go a little bit more so yeah you need to get a pump that can do that now that's fine when you've got a big bicycle pump like that that will get up to 110 100 and whatever 160 you probably haven't didn't go that far but it will go up there and it's fine no problem with that whatsoever but that's a bit big. You can't really take that on a, on a holiday with you. So that's when I had to start buying pumps. And it's taken me probably a month to find the pump that will work. So first of all, I tried this pump. Um, it was 20 pounds, not very expensive at the time. And it got to, it claimed to got to 120 PSI. It got to 97. And then it couldn't go any more couldn't go anymore at all so I thought okay fine that's fine send it back get my refund let's order another one right this one claims to go up to 220 psi uh, or 210 it's on the screen whatever it is and unfortunately all this video footage I had of me testing these pumps has been lost because it's taken me so long to get around to making this video but this I wish I had, I wish I had the footage still because it got to about 80 psi and then it started hissing, so something, the release valve broke, um, and hissing and losing its pressure, so I unplugged with it. And yeah, it can only get up to about 60 psi, not, not nowhere near its 200, and claimed 200 psi that it claimed it could have done. And that was around, you know, 30 pounds, so, you know, you're thinking, oh, what should we do, you know? But then I thought, you know what, let's, let's, these pumps take absolutely forever to pump up. Um, let, let's go with a beefier electric pump. Now, I usually carry a small electric pump when I go off-roading anyway, so I can just plug it in at the end of the day and pump my tyres back up to road pressure, because pumping up a, a massive tyre, you know, with a small dinky bicycle pump is gonna take a very long time. So I decided, right, let me get an electric one. Now, Halfords. Um, Alfred's pump, it claims it's got 120 psi. It sat there for the longest time at like 90 something. Uh, it got there very quickly. Um, I give it, you know, it got there very quickly. Pumping up a car tire or bike tire, that was quick, very quick, very impressed with that. Um, but it just wasn't, was not getting past that wouldn't even reach 100 so I thought you know what I'll take it back oh yeah also all of them pumps that I've previously mentioned they all got very hot like when I was pumping they, they, they I felt like heat coming off of them um, I know pumps do get hot with the pressure and stuff but I was thinking well they're not even up to 100 psi and they're already getting hot you know uh, and they weren't all plastic. The first one that was plastic actually outperformed the one that was metal. Um, which, you know, was like, I thought, you know, you spend 30 pound on a product that looks like decent, you know, you'd think they'd be somewhat decent, unfortunately not. And um, I tested all of these pumps using a, um, one of these, and they all failed miserably. Until, and now I asked around, I was like, okay, this is, I can't take this bicycle pump with me, it's too much. What pump should I get? And I just found out that I should get this one. Uh, it feels solid, which is really good. And it is a Fox, anyway, I'll put a link below what it is. Um, but this, if you're ever gonna do distance on your CRF, which is what I myself like to do, I like to go on camping trips and stuff like that. 
and go for days at a time. And if you've got the tubeless system, you need to check that tire valve once. They say once a day before you ride, but realistically, you can check it every two days. Like if you're riding every day, I managed to check mine. Uh, it, 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 I did a trip, I did you know a few days riding, I checked it, it only gone down by like one PSI, so it wasn't it wasn't like thing, but when the bike sat there for a few days or whatever, then you go to it, then that's when you need to check. But in case you do need to check it when you're on the trails or you're out for a, like a week or something like that, then you need to carry some sort of pump that can go up to, this one can go up to 300 PSI. It did take quite a while to pump up the tubeless system with this, because that's about as much as you're gonna get each time. But when you attach this end bit to the end, and take it off like no air escapes that like normally you start hissing like and then you're like frantically trying to get these off this came off so easily and yeah it's really impressed with this it just took a long time to get it but it's so small so what can you do but this is the only one out of the four other ones I've tried or whatever I just couldn't couldn't get it to the thing and this is small enough where it can just go in my bag and I can take that on my trip with me. And it's still, oh, it's a weight saving compared to taking spare tubes and stuff like that. I mean, look, that's a heavy duty tube. And you know, they weigh a fair bit. You have one of them on your rear tire, and then you have a spare one of these on the rear bag. That's a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight, that is. And the fact that it can still get a puncher, it can still fail. I mean, a tube ballist system can, but when I had a puncher, I was able to keep riding. And then just got home at the end. I didn't even bother to plug it there and then. I just carried on riding throughout the day. And when I got home, I plugged it. So when you got a puncher, and you can find it finally, it's a slow puncher found the sucker we can just plug it using one of these kits now this stuff is really really ancient I've got a new packet this is like over 10 years old so this might not work, but I've got some new ones. I just thought I'd try to use this really old one. It's, it could be heavily out of date, so it might not actually work. The tire probably took a lot of more wear, you know, riding home on the roads, than uh, it would have if it was pumped up. But the fact that I was able to plug it within five minutes and just pump it up and leave it and it was fine. It's a lot better and a lot easier to deal with than taking the wheel off, putting it all back together. And riding on zero PSI on a tubeless system, tubeless system, is fine. It doesn't wiggle or squirm around. It doesn't feel like the tires trying to leave the rim. Like, when I mean, you can ride a bike without any air in the tire, it just, the tire just squishes and just goes like that and you can go maybe what, five miles an hour? Seven, if you're lucky, depending on the tire and the bike. But yeah, on the tubeless system, it stays on the, the rim and you can ride about 30, 40 mile an hour and it's generally okay just to go around corners is a bit questionable. But there, yeah, other than that, that is the tubeless system that's my thoughts. You probably already watched a load of reviews already on how to install it, to do all these things, or there's there's many better videos than mine out there. This is just my experience and my snag that I had when installing it. But if you just use a CRF for, or your bike or dirt bike, just going 
to the trails once a day and that's it, then yeah, or you've got all this, or you're trailering it and you've got all the space for the bigger pumps and stuff, then it's fine. But it's just when you're doing that long distance travel, you need to have a small pump to take with you that actually works.